guest uh, is Joe and Sarah. And Joe and I go back to the early 80s. Uh, that's when we first met. And we, we had a great friendship that had an interruption <laughs> and, and was, was for about 15 years. Yeah, about 15 years. We weren't mad at each other, though. <clears throat> we just didn't have any contact. And, but we don't want to waste your time getting into that. But then Joe and I, uh, it, it was too good a, a friendship just to never uh, restart. And so we did restart it, and we've uh, been in communication uh, for the last, what, 15 years? Yeah, and I've written a handful of columns around... Uh natural gas and energy issues that uh, where you've been quoted or been part of right yes that's right sure but you and you you didn't know anything about the business when we first met but you knew you know a lot about the business now but my god that was 30 years ago too 30 uh, but you were a junior uh, writer Right. Junior, or is that unfair? No, 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 not unfair at all. It was my first assignment at Texas Monthly. It's my first business story that I ever wrote. Um, and just so people know, it was about uh, your attempt to take over city service. Um, and it was um, it was a heck of a story. It was a heck of a story. Cause, uh, yeah, I mean, it was new, very new to you, mm -hmm. but it was new to me too. That's right. It was, and I, I mean, I was, I was kind of walking in the dark and uh, so it, uh, it it was it was an interesting story it was it was an it was an interesting experience anyway yesterday um, or not, re excuse me recently um, Boone and I were on stage together um, at the Texas Tribune Festival and we had such a good time talking we thought maybe we would um, reverse roles in this podcast and instead of Boone asking the questions uh, I'm going to ask most of the questions. So. You did yesterday. Yeah, I know I did yesterday. Why are we reversing roles? You get to, you're getting to do it again. I like it. It's fun. Okay. I'm good at asking questions. Okay. You're just saying that it was so good yesterday, yeah. the way you did it. We'll put it on a podcast. And so, and yeah, we want more people to see it. Okay. Simple good. as that. All right. Good. So the first thing we talked about was energy. And um, we talked about the, the fact that the price of natural gas has gone so low, uh, which I believe you did not predict. I think that's a fair statement. That the... Uh, that, that the price of natural gas last year uh, was heading downward? Oh, I'd given up last year. Okay, we don't want to talk about last year. Oh, sure. Talk about anything you want to. But, I, I mean, natural gas, there is so much natural gas, uh, it's hard to pay much for it. Right. And, and, and what's the... Con I mean, so for the country... This is a net good, which I think a lot of people don't really focus on because they're focused on other aspects of natural gas. So talk about that. Oh, it's fabulous for the country. I mean, you said net good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I want to relate this to, it made me think of it, that I was, uh, I've been in the cattle business a lot of times, but I had a ranch down in East Texas, and I had a, a, a cowboy down there was working for me, and uh, and boy, I tell you, it, it was they were hard to get rid of cattle work. Oh, the, the, the guys or the cattle? The cattle. Okay. Boy, the price had dived. And he said, uh, he said, yeah, I said, Mr. Peyton said, I was going in to uh, Bogota and said I had a flat tire on a, on my trailer. And so he said, I just parked it out there. And, and I said, well, why in the hell didn't you change the tire out there? He said, I said, you getting ready to tell me that somebody stole your trailer? And he said, no, no, that's not it. I went in, and uh, and I said I jacked it up, took the tire, went, didn't have a spare, and said I went in and, and uh, fixed it, came back. And he said, you know, those cattle are getting so cheap. Somebody put three calves in that in that trailer while I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, he was kidding me, but it that's about the way natural gas is. It's so cheap. Why, you know, there's natural gas sold for less than a dollar up in the northeast in the Marcellus last year. Hmm. Less than a dollar. But doesn't that mean that uh, there are fewer rigs, there's fewer, uh, the, there's, there's the economic incentive to, to frack and to drill that gas has decreased? And, um, I mean, won't that lower the amount of gas that we have access to? You mean because 
Oh. Because the price is so low, and they're, it's not economical. Well, it's, but remember, it's been there for 500 million years, so it isn't going to go anyplace. So any anytime you want it, you can go get it. But it, it, but to show you what happened to the activity for natural gas, we had 1,400 rigs drilling for natural gas eight years ago. Today we have 80, 80, less than 100 rigs. And... Nobody, nobody is crying for gas. So those eighty must be getting you enough gas to satisfy the market. And so, where else are we getting our? Where are we getting our oil and gas from, besides the United States? The United States, uh, besides okay. us. Okay, we've got. Uh, we use more oil than any place else in the world. Twenty million barrels. How does that compare to the world? The world is using ninety-five million barrels, but we are the largest user. Mm -hmm. uh, in the 95 million. Our next to us is China, and they're just under 11 million. So they're using half what we do. Where does that oil come from? Well, we, we had uh, declined to about 4 million barrels a day 10 years ago, and then we got on to horizontal drilling and fracking, and we increased oil from 4 million barrels up to 9.6. Now, rigs again, 1,609 rigs were operating in November of 14, so two years ago. Now, we have 414 rigs operating. Mm -hmm. So what's happened is the 9.6 million barrels that we had uh, reached is now 8.4. It's gone off a million two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, your question is, where does it all come from? Right. Okay, so there's 8.4. We're using 20, and we get uh, over three from Canada, one from uh, Mexico. So there's four, and that, that gets us up to 12. So there's eight more to come. Actually, we are not getting uh, from the Mideast. We're getting only about 1.2 million barrels. The rest of it, is scattered and we'll get Do some. we need those 1.2 million barrels or could we get it somewhere else? From we, the don't, we don't need it if we had an energy plant. Mm -hmm. You can pick up 3 million barrels real quick by switching your heavy duty trucks over to natural gas. Which is something you've been calling for for a long time yeah, and, uh, and about to run but, out of time. Uh, sounds to me as one of the things you seem to be saying uh, the other day was that uh, you know we're moving in that direction and that um, uh, the carriers like UPS and um, and FedEx are, are very interested in this. Well, UPS is 100% on natural gas, and they announced that a couple of years ago. Uh, FedEx uh, last month uh, announced they were opening a big regional station in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, start to go to natural gas. And what... Would, if, if trucks went to natural gas, what that'd save if, you three million barrels. That would save you three million barrels. Yeah, that's uh, eighteen wheelers. Mm -hmm. We're talking. They call them class eight mm -hmm. trucks. For, if you went from class five through class eight, you could save more than three million barrels of oil. And how long have you been uh, promoting this idea? <laughs> <laughs> you laugh. You should laugh. Because <laughs> everybody should laugh. Because in 1988, I made a speech and said, natural gas is cleaner, it's cheaper, and it's domestic. If I got that to sell, I said, if, if you have that to sell with, anybody can sell it. And I was asked from the audience, how long do you think it will take you to penetrate the market? And I said, I've got to be able to do it in three to five years. That was 1988. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Joe, my direction has been good. My timing has been horrible sometimes. Well, yeah, which is almost just as bad, right, sometimes. Um, what about, um, well, one of the reasons it's taken so long, not the only reason, is uh, that the environmental community has come to the view that fracking is terrible for the environment, it causes earthquakes, there's methane that leaks out of the, uh, out of the wells, uh, the, w the waste is, uh, especially in the East Coast, is, uh, you can't bury the waste in the East. Um, they, they, they cite all these problems and they basically say we should not be fracking and they've had, a, they've had an impact. 
maybe not the only impact, but they've had an impact. So what is your view? Well, what are you saying when you say they had an impact? They didn't have an impact on we built the production up from 4 million barrels to 9.6. You have more natural gas and all. Where is it the environmental has, has in, hurt? In New York State. In New York, take New York State where uh, they're actually going to build casinos that will not do very well. But that their way of employing people who are out of work is to build casinos when they could be building uh, where they could be drilling wells in the southern uh, in the southern corridor of New York State. But Andrew Cuomo has outlawed it. I know, but uh, New York State uses natural gas. I, I understand that. They love it. and But New York State doesn't have that much natural gas to, uh, you know, mess up the market. Right across Pennsylvania, not so, but Pennsylvania is drilling it up and creating jobs and taxes, and they have activity. The missing link in, in Pennsylvania is the infrastructure to transport it out. Well, if, if, if you say the environmentalists haven't be, been the big difference maker, then why has it taken so long to get traction on this idea about natural gas and trucks? I've got to, uh, yeah, my age, I've got to clear up everything now because I won't be around very long. I'm not a very good salesman, Joe. <laughs> That's uh, not what I hear. <laughs> well, I didn't get out and get it sold. We were this close to having it. And it was the Natural Gas Act, and it was in, uh, let's see, it was five years ago. And uh, we r voted on it, and Koch brothers killed it. They, they uh, influenced the Republican vote. They didn't want it because they, they were in the fertilizer business, so they wanted cheap gas. They didn't want any more demand for natural gas didn't realize how much natural gas we had, but they were in fertilizer business, they were in the plastic business. They imported 62,000 uh, barrels of OPEC oil, and they uh, and I wanted to get off OPEC oil, and the fourth one was that they, they were one of the biggest recipients of the ethanol subsidy. But I'm sure they would have argued at the time that they were against subsidies, and that's why they were against your thing. As a matter but they were of, taking matter. subsidies and right. ethanol, and, and so uh, mine one did not have subsidies. It was a tax credit, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I mean that's I don't think a subsidy, but it uh, we could have done it then. It, it would have been unbelievable what it would have done for uh, really for the country. Do you think the country will be ener energy self sufficient at some point? They it could be very quickly that if they made a North American Energy uh, Alliance, mm -hmm. which would put Canada and Mexico, United States, we're the market for their oil and gas. And uh, uh, the, uh, the Mexicans are lagging everything. They need assistance, money, and they need, uh, they need technical help. And we could provide that and recover out of the increased production of oil that we did for them. Yeah, you can't do that, though, if you're going to build a wall. <laughs> Get it in before they build a wall. <laughs> they build a wall after we build. And, of course, in Canada, they have the, um, what do you call it, the, the, um, the oil, the tar oil, which they don't like to call it that, but the tar sand oil, which would require the Keystone XL. You don't use tar. It's all sands. Yeah, oil well, sands. Excuse me. Excuse me, Canada. Sorry. <laughs> all industry, too. <laughs> We're not in the tar business. So anyway, um, but again, sure, the, the environmentalists are up in arms about that. They think it's dirty, it's dirty oil, and they're against the Keystone Pipeline, which they won on Keystone, at least so far. Well, it passed the House and the Senate. It got, the bill got killed by the president. Well, one of the things that's peculiar about the country, we don't have an energy plan. We're the only country in the world without an energy plan. And uh, what we have is, is there's not anybody in government that really has uh, the responsibility for energy. You'll say, well, the energy department. No, they had nothing to do with the pipeline coming from Canada. That was actually uh, an issue for the State Department. Right. Right. And then you export oil out of the country, 
you go to the Commerce Department. Right. And then a lot of the oil uh, uh, drilling is regulated by the states. Oh, oh absolutely is. Thank God it is. <laughs> yeah, the EPA looked at the fracking mm -hmm. and couldn't find anything wrong with it. And the EPA is, uh, I mean, they look at things very close. So uh, let's uh, switch a little bit here, and um, I want to ask you, I mean, I, you know, I wrote a book about college sports, and a lot of people ask me about it. Um, uh, you are the biggest supporter of Oklahoma State University uh, athletics, and as you would say, academics as well. Um, why, at your age, does, does it matter? Probably doesn't. Okay. So but what doesn't matter? Uh, OS, OSU, supporting OSU athletics. Why doesn't it matter? Why does it matter to you? Well, I wanted the school to get competitive. And uh, we were not competitive. And Mike Holder uh, was, the, uh, well, was the golf coach when we had these conversations. He and I were uh, very uh, avid quail hunters. And we would come to my ranch and and uh, we would hunt quail and we'd talk about how we could uh, make Oklahoma State competitive. And so when I made the first gift, I gave over 500 million, but the first gift was 165, uh, which was in 2005. And at that time I said, it, my goal is to be competitive. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we're gonna uh, win all our games. That's mm -hmm. un unreal. to think that way, but I was tired of OU beating us. Uh, we, we now, I think, have won 110 games, I think we won something like 20 games with OU. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I want to be competitive with OU. Uh, we have done, you know, the program has done pretty well, but we spent a lot of money on it mm -hmm. and all, and we brought, uh, we brought a coach there, Mike Gundy, who was, uh, he was an OSU quarterback, had, was very good. He played in the backfield with, uh, with uh, Barry Sanders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and also, uh, 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 he, he was taken in the NFL Hall of Fame. Thurman Thomas. Yeah, uh, Thurman Thomas, just, uh, senior moment mm -hmm. but Thurman and and Sanders both played in the backfield with Mike Gunny mm -hmm. so uh, you know I could and historically we would have coaches that would come springboard out mm -hmm. to someplace else stay well for instance uh, oh, uh, uh, oh Les Miles mm -hmm. he was mm -hmm. there four years mm -hmm. but Les beat OU two out of four years mm -hmm. he had the best record of any coach at uh, Oklahoma State on beating on you, and present coach Gundy has played him eleven times, and he's won two. So we're two and nine on Gundy's record. But Gundy has a a good record with Texas. We have beat Texas. This is a record that nobody will ever beat. That the last four times we played Texas in Austin, mm -hmm. we've beaten them, and. We'll get a chance to make it five this year. And wrong, next year. They play they play Stillwater this year. But next year we'll, we'll have a chance to see if we can uh, add on to that four straight years. But we we are not competitive with OU. And the Big 12 championship, mm -hmm. it passes through OU almost every year. You've got to beat OU if you're going to be the Big 12 champion. You know, you told me once, I asked you a long time ago uh, why you were – investing in OSU sports and your answer was uh, well Joe it's uh, one thing I can try to change while I'm still alive uh -huh. I did and that's kind of how it's turned out it has do you think uh, the Big 12 needs to expand probably will and I don't care you don't no if it, it was up to me I I think college football players probably play too many games they take too many hits and I think sometime something will be done about that, but that'll be after I'm gone. But I, I do uh, the the Big 12 with 10 teams. Mm -hmm. That looks a little bit stupid. 
Well, you got the Big Ten with 14 teams, so. I know. It, it's it's kind of well, the way it is. But that was the name, and they hate yeah. to change it. Right. Okay, so the Big 12 has 10 teams. So we play nine conference mm -hmm. games a year. We know who's the best. Right. Okay. Now, you have uh, Big 12, SEC. They're broken in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, divisions, east, west, north, south. And, and they have a championship game. And I, they trying to convince me. They said we need to have a championship game. I said we do have. Yeah, it, it's uh, at the end of the year. You know who won. But they, you know, the real argument is that it'll be easier. It's easier to get into the college playoffs. Oh sure. If you have a I, if you I, have a championship game. I understand. I've talked to Bob Bowlesby, mm -hmm. uh, the big uh, yeah the, the commissioner yeah, our, our commissioner, and he says you know probably going to have to do it. Okay, do it. I don't give a damn hell. I it didn't. I've got people call me, want me. Uh, Fred Smith. I tried to get Memphis uh, considered, uh -huh. and uh, and Fred wants to get. Uh, sure. Yeah, sure. And then I've got Corby. Uh, uh, well, the other day, I uh, the uh, the president of the University of Houston came up to talk to you. Well, I was with her. I mean, but that was really, you know, she she wants she wants she wants Houston to be in the Big Twelve. And it's God. fine with me. I don't give a damn. Uh, uh, but uh, and SMU, uh, their president called me the other day. They they think I may have some influence. I don't have any influence. I did help TCU get in. And, uh, but, <laughs> well, it doesn't but, sound like you have no influence. Really. Well, they won't. You know, say, can we say you're for us? I said, sure. Say I'm for you. So. On that note, our esteemed producer is telling us we should wrap it up. So, uh, Boone, this was a pleasure. Always fun talking to you. Always fun seeing you. And um, you know, this may be a record podcast. Why is you that? Know, we have millions watch it. Do we? No, maybe not millions. <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. Hundreds. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Joe, it was good. Thank you.